Can we create an asteroid scene completely inside After Effects? Oh yes we can. So let's begin. Let's create a 1920 by 1080 composition. Let's add a background, maybe a gray color. It kind of gives me that 3D program kind of a feel. Okay, let's create the smoke first. Create a new solid and name it smoke. Apply the CC particle world effect to it. There you go, we now have some particles in our scene. Go to the physics rollout and set the animation to fire. So as the name suggests, this works best for fire and smoke simulations. So push it back in Z-axis a bit, maybe a value of 3 will be fine. We now need to change the direction of the particles. So by default the particles are going up, but we want them to go in this direction. We can see that the direction axis parameters are inaccessible here, especially when you are in fire physics. So the workaround is to manipulate the gravity vector. So by default, the vector is set to y axis, which is this axis, which makes the fire go in the opposite direction. So we need the particles to go in this direction, which means we want the gravity vector to be acting in this direction. So a y value of 1 and an x value of negative 1 will give us that direction. So set the x to minus 1 and there you go. If you are familiar with vectors, you will understand this a little better. So check this out. Okay, the particles are going in the required direction now. Let's increase the lifespan of the particles. The simulation feels a bit slower. Let's increase the speed of the particles. We do have a velocity parameter in the physics rollout, but if you change this, as you can see here, it increases the size of the particles or the dimension of the particles. So this works this way, especially when you're in fire physics. Set the velocity back to one. So the workaround is by increasing the gravity. So if you set this to a value of 1.5, check this out. So now the speed of the particles increased. In real world, what happens is when a massive object is burning, like a house or say asteroid in this case, the smoke that gets generated will initially rise up fast because of the heat. But later, as it goes up and up and up, it cools down and becomes dense and slows down. This can be simulated by increasing the resistance value in the physics rollout, maybe a value of 4. So now check this out. Smoke rises up fast and then slows down. Alright. Let's increase the lifespan so that the particles cover the entire frame. Okay, we now have the smoke simulation. Let's add a texture to it. Import a smoke of texture. The project files will be in the description. This is basically a white smoke puff image with some alpha value to it. Let's pre comp this. Leave all attributes in the comp and rename this to smoke puff texture. To use this as texture, step into the particle rollout and change the particle type to textured faded disk and select the smoke puff as the texture. Increase the birth size maybe to 0.5. So in real world the smoke at the time of origin will be of smaller size and it, as it rises up the size increases. So increase the depth size to maybe a value of 2. There you go. Change the color to a kind of a gray value. That color also to same and maybe increase the butt color just a bit. 
maybe decrease opacity to 50 percent okay this is not at all looking like what we wanted to create so we have this option called volume shade inside the particle world so if we increase this all the way to 100 this basically adds some light to the particles they were creating some volume we can change the light direction so max to maybe one okay this makes the light to come from the left and check this out it's looking a bit better now maybe decrease the volume shade to 90. okay let me show you something real quick set the position back to zero and because this is a 3d effect if you create a camera and if you rotate it there you go so you now have some 3d smoke inside after effects it's pretty cool you can do some cool stuff with it it's up to you so let's delete the camera and set the position back to 3. To improve the look, you can actually increase the particle count, maybe a value of 4. It looks a lot better now, but the problem is After Effects might struggle a bit to handle this in real time. So it's always better to work at a lower value and at the time of the final render, you can always increase the particle count. So enough with the smoke, let's create the fire now. Duplicate the smoke layer and name this fire. Let's isolate this. Go to the particle rollout and turn off volume shading. Also, make the butt color white and that color black as usual. Increase the butt rate to 4. We require a lot of particles for fire simulation and also change the transform mode to screen. This will make it look a little bit kind of like fire. Let's decrease the opacity maybe to a value of 20 seems to be fine. Increase the birth size and decrease the death size. The opposite of what we did for smoke. Mm, maybe increase the death size to 1. Okay. Now, head into the opacity map. So this map defines the opacity of the particles in their lifespan. So at birth, all particles will start at opacity value of 0. And after some time, opacity value increases to 100, stays 100 throughout the lifespan. And by the end, it goes back to 0. Uh, let's switch the death color to white to see this better. And also, let's decrease the lifespan. There you go. At first, it is transparent, slowly becomes opaque, stays opaque and finally becomes transparent again. So if we draw the graph like this, all particles will start at opacity of 100 and ends at 0. Let's switch back to the initial settings, Control Z, and draw the graph kind of like this, so the particles fade out soon. Maybe tweak it a little bit like this. There you go. Particles slowly fade out, and this works best for fire simulation. Unisolate it and set the blending mode to screen. There you go. We have the fire, we have the smoke. And that's it. <laughs> Just kidding. The fire is not at all close to what we wanted to create. So, to improve the look, add a set matte effect to the fire layer. Isolate it to see it better. And set the layer to smoke layer and make sure you include the effects of the smoke layer too. And now invert the alpha mat and check this out. There you go. This helps to blend the smoke and fire together. Uh, I'm not liking the opacity of the smoke layer here. So head to the smoke layer and open the opacity map and let's decrease the opacity at the starting. Mm, something like this. Maybe like this. Yeah. Maybe even more. 
so the smoke slowly blends in okay this feels okay to me so now head back to the fire layer and add a glow effect So decrease the threshold all the way to zero, increase the radius 50 and decrease the intensity to maybe a 0.1 or maybe less. Add another glow effect, make the threshold zero, increase the radius to even higher value and decrease the intensity. Oh, and I almost forgot. We need to get rid of the alpha channel, especially when you are using glow effects. Otherwise, this will create some color issues and artifacts. So apply a solid composite effect uh, right before set matte. Make this black. This gets rid of the alpha channel and fills up the image. So enable the set matte and enable the glow effects again. Add another glow effect. Decrease the threshold all the way to back to zero again. Increase the radius. Maybe a value of 300. And decrease the intensity. All right, uh, this looks okay to me. Let's add a VC color vibrance effect. This is the only plugin that I'm gonna use in this video. It's a free plugin from Video Copilot anyway, so I don't think there's no point in not using it, especially if it provides superior results. So make the color orange. There you go, now it's looking like fire. So unisolate it and check this out. Let's darken the smoke a bit. Add a curse effect and darken it just a little bit. Also, I would like to tweak my smoke of texture here. So add an adjustment layer and and add some blur to it. Fast box blur. Let's blur it just a bit. Okay. Add another adjustment layer. I would like to brighten up the center portion. So add a circular mask. Select the area where you want to brighten up. Add a curves effect. And increase the brightness. Also, let's feather the mask to blend it better. There you go. It looks a lot better now. Maybe darken it uh, even more. So this is all basically look development. It all comes down to personal taste. Yeah, this looks okay to me. So I would like to take a moment here to appreciate the set matte effect here. So without it, the fire looks something like this. But that single effect completely changed the look. So let's increase the particle count and preview it. There you go looking well okay we've been simulating an asteroid but there's no asteroid here so so let's add an asteroid to the scene let's import an asteroid texture the project files will be in the description import it into the main com and pre-compose it leave all attributes and name this to asteroid rock decrease the scale and position it right Something like this, okay. Now let's pre-compose it and name this to asteroid rock com and make sure you set this thing to move all attributes now. Okay, we now have a large pre-comp with a small asteroid in the center. So if we select the fire layer and add a set mat effect to it, um, all the way up here and select the layer to asteroid rock turn these things off to see it better 
this is without the set matter effect and this is with it change this to luminance and invert the mat there you go so so this helps to composite asteroid inside the fire like the asteroid is burning so enable all the other effects this is how it looks it looks stupid okay so to improve the look head into the asteroid composition and add a solid and name it fractal And as the name suggests, add a fractal noise effect to it. All right, uh, select the fractal type to dynamic progressive and noise type to flame. And invert it to make it look kind of like flames. Let's animate the offset turbulence in this direction. So to achieve that, we need to increase the x value and decrease the y value. So let's add a time expression to it. Let's write uh, time times 500 comma time times negative 500. So this makes the flames go that direction and also add a time expression to the evolution time times 500. Okay. Now let's break on the asteroid texture duplicate it and use that as an alpha mat for the fractal layer and set the fractal layer to multiply there you go we're basically trying to simulate asteroid burning here so add a curse effect and darken it a bit so let's see what we have changed in the main comp here there you go Okay, if we Okay, yeah, that looks okay to me. Okay, the asteroid is looking very sharp. So add a fast box plot to the asteroid comp. Maybe a value of eight. Okay. Okay, that looks okay to me. Also, let's rotate the asteroid rock. So head into the asteroid pre-comp and add in time expression to the rotation of the asteroid time times maybe negative 200 so this makes the asteroid slowly rotate and if you check this in the main comp this is what we ended up with we have a burning rotating asteroid we can actually decrease the brightness even more to make it even more subtle yeah something like that so as already said this is our look development if you want to you can tweak it even more so without any delay let's import the background and place it below the smoke layer there you go it's already looking good Increase the scale, maybe a value of 140. So let's animate the position of the background to simulate the camera movement. So at first frame, keyframe the position, and at last frame, move the position something like this in the direction of the smoke and fire. There you go. So this gives the parallax effect of the background being at a farther distance from the camera. Let's add some blur to the background. Okay, that looks fine. Okay, let's add some clouds in the foreground. 